I'm Sister Mary John Mananzan, Order of St. Benedict. I belong to the Missionary Benedictine Sisters of Tutsing, which is a German uh, congregation. But 107 years ago, they came to the Philippines and established our priory. So I belong to the Manila Priory of this congregation. And I just finished my term as prioress in April 2012. How did you become a nun? Oh my God, don't ask me that. Ask me why I am staying. <laughs> because, because I was very young. I was only 19 years old and I was studying in the school of the sisters. So I was there since I was 11 years old and I brought the books of the sisters. So I said, might as well enter this place, <laughs> you know. And so that's why I always say, ask me why I, I, I stay because I entered out of inertia, I think, because I'm there all the time. So I said, we might as well continue and see whether, whether I would like this life. And as I went on with my life there, I found more and more reasons to, to stay and to see the meaning in religious life. My understanding of being a prophet is to announce the good news and to denounce the bad news. So in other words, to announce the good news means, well, to live in our lives what we want people to, to live which is the gospel of Christ, which is to love people. But the second one is a little bit more tricky. It's about denouncing uh, what is uh, bad news. And there's so much bad news in the world today, you know, all the injustices, all the oppression, all the, all the corruption. And we believe that as religious, we have, a, we have something to do about that. We cannot say we are just in the convent praying. No, we have to get involved in society. That's what we believe in. Oh, if I'm a follower of Christ, and Christ has an option for the poor, then I must also have an option for the poor. Otherwise, I'm not the follower of Christ. So when we look at that, well, if Christ has option for the poor, I must be in solidarity with the poor. And what were the poor doing in my country? They were fighting for their rights, you know? The workers are fighting for their wages and for good working conditions. The farmers are fighting for their land because a lot of Filipinos don't own their land. The urban poor are fighting for housing. The women are fighting against sex slavery and uh, prostitution and, and discrimination against, uh, in society. So all those things, for me, we as religious uh, women, we have a lot to say about this. And I think that is our prophetic role in this, in this uh, society. So the Vatican too made the difference because now it showed to us that this world is important. Not just the other world, but this world. I have to tell you a story. One time I was on top of a 10-wheeler truck, you know, uh, making a speech with 10,000 people. And uh, I was saying, do not pay the oil price hike, you know, oil price hike. Because if you pay it, all the basic commodities will also uh, go up and all the poor people will suffer. And then a policeman came and told me, you are a sister. I said, yes. And she said, oh, why are you talking about all price hike and, and wages? You ought to talk about mortal sin, venial sin. You ought to talk about the soul of people. And I asked him, do you see any soul walking about here? You know, what I see are people, body and soul. And therefore, if I'm a sister and I want to save this person, it's not his soul or her soul only, but everything that is working against this person as a total human being. Well, I was talking to 800 superior generals, which was overwhelming. And what I have tried to say is, you as superiors, you certainly have power. But how do you use your power? You can use your power to dominate, uh, to uh, make yourself boss, but you can use also for service. That means to say how to develop your gifts and the gifts of all your sisters. And not only that, but to put together all these gifts for the good of the institution and of the church. So that is what I'm trying to say. Use your power for the kingdom of God and not for your ego. That is my, that is my message.